Let's uh, start with downloading Farseer Physics. I have it in the list already. Uh, I'm feeling lucky. Um, I'm just gonna uh, download the current release. The license is pretty liberal. Just don't sue Jeff Weaver. Um, otherwise you can do pretty much anything you want except of course uh, sell Farseer to somebody else as you don't own it. I'll just click agree on that. Uh, you can use it however in your programs, even commercial programs. And I'll save that. Uh, on the desktop sounds fine. Okay, we'll just wait for that to download and then I'll show you how to integrate it into your project. Uh, I'll close Internet Explorer for now. Okay, there it is. Uh, let's extract that. Uh, as you can see, there are a few different folders. Here are some demos on how it works. Uh, this is... Um, a wrapper similar to our game that we are making and this is the actual physics engine uh, since we have our own wrapper we won't use this one and uh, the demos are something you can play around with yourself if you want all we want today is just the actual physics engine um, if I open up my documents and then I go to my projects folder then I have our game there uh, as you can see here is the file for the solution and uh, inside this folder you have one project we are going to add a second project so I'll just take this one and drag and drop it in there and then inside this folder you also have a project file Okay, let's start up Visual C Sharp. Here you have the solution, and we have one project in it. And uh, in the solution, we are going to add, uh, I'll click over here instead so you can see, we're going to add a new, not a new project, an existing project, because we already put it in that folder. So, now it's suggesting the desktop, but uh, we'll go into my projects and uh, inside this folder we already have Farseer Physics. I'll click on the project file and open and now you will see that we have uh, our game and we have Farseer Physics. So now our project has two projects. Our solution has two projects, sorry. Now there is one more thing to do. Uh, our game will use Farseer, so therefore we will uh, add a reference to Farseer. And uh, you can add references from several different places. We're adding to another project, so we'll just do the, the Farseer project there. and. Uh, now that we have that reference, you'll see that uh, project dependencies has already automatically got Farseer physics in there, which means that uh, uh, this is going to work fine. Farseer is going to compile first, and then our game is going to use Farseer physics when it compiles. Now the next step is to link the two projects in code and uh, we will do that with a singleton. So I'll add a new class. Uh, we can just call it Farseer perhaps. And I think that's it for Solution Explorer. Um, Let's delete this and start over. We are, of course, going to use 
Microsoft uh, XNA. But uh, we are also going to use Far Seer Games, which is the namespace that Jeff Weber has created. And in that one, we have the physics engine. How did I know that? Well, you can just open one of the files. Uh, I'll get the Solution Explorer back and show you. You can just open one of these files, and then you will see that uh, that is the namespace that he is using. Um, our namespace, however, is something else. And uh, we're going to have a class in here. Uh, remember that we're going to make a class that will handle Farseer uh, from fast, uh, a class in our project that will handle Farseer, which is another project. And we want to be able to handle Farseer from anywhere. So we're going to make a public class. And uh, if you remember, if you make it sealed, that means that uh, it will speed up the code because it will remove the ability to derive and stuff like that. Uh, so that's going to be our class. Well, let's just call it Farseer. Okay. And uh, the only thing basically that uh, our class is going to contain is a static field. Uh, we can make it read only too because we're never going to modify any Farseer at all. And uh, then we're going to create the physics simulator. Uh, we can just call it uh, physics. And uh, how about we just new ourselves one right away. And uh, this one can take a setting if we want. It can take uh, gravity. So let's um, start by providing gravity right away. So we do a, a new vector, uh, which will have um, float x is z z 0 and float y uh, we can set to about 300. It's a good start. We can modify it later on. Now to go along with this one, the, the static uh, field, we're going to have a, a static constructor. Uh, the constructor has to have the same name, so we'll just do a simple little constructor. I'll close it up right away because we're not really going to do anything with it. We just want to basically block so that uh, nobody else can do anything. So we're creating an empty one, basically blocking. This means that it's going to be thread safe, for example, which is a concept we haven't gone over yet, but uh, we might do that later on. And uh, then we have to, of course, make a public uh, property for our field as well. Uh, that should also be static. And it's going to be a physics simulator. And let's use uh, the same name there, physics. And uh, we just need a get because it's read only anyway. Uh, so we just return physics. And that should be pretty nice and clean code. Okay. Uh, it's not 100% lazy because if it's a completely lazy, that means that we have full control when of when uh, it is instantiated, i.e. only when we knew ourselves the first one or create the first one. But um, this way of doing it, uh, the any time we call any of the static members, such as any time somebody tries to access physics, if there is no... Uh, 
no class yet, then the, the static uh, static constructor will fire off and create a, a copy. So it's almost lazy, but good enough for us. The only problem with this version of a, a singleton is that uh, you cannot have a, a static constructor calling another static constructor. So if we, if we have a Actually, you cannot have a, a static constructor call another static constructor which calls the first again because it creates a, a bad loop. And this is a static constructor, so it's a bit dangerous if we would have a static constructor somewhere else. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty good way to do it. We could have uh, skipped writing all of this and just made uh, this one public instead by writing public here. Uh, if I can spell, no, I cannot. There we go. But um, the rest of our program is designed with properties, so we're going to keep this code here. <laughs>